Okay, when we're multiplying monomials, okay, now monomial is connected together with multiplication, no addition or subtraction, and um, here I'll write that up here. Okay, um, that's multiplication. Oh, crud. So, so step one is to multiply the coefficients. And then the second step is to add exponents on like variables. Okay, so just as an example, I have 4x to the 5th y squared times 2x to the 3rd. So the 4 times 2 go together and the x's go together. And then the y here is just sort of by itself. So 4 times 2 is 8. x to the 5th times x to the 3rd is going to give me x to the 8th because I add the exponents y squared. Here's why it works. Let me, let me go more breaking down. We do 4 times 2 times x to the 5th times x to the 3rd times y squared. Everything gets multiplied together. Like with like. Okay, 4 times 2, that part's easy, that's 8. x to the 5th times x to the 3rd if you have x to the 5th, you have 5x's, right? And if you have x to the 3rd, you have 3 more x's. So all together, you end up with 8x's. And that's why you add the exponents. So this is saying there's 5x's in a row and 3x's in a row. So that makes 8 total x's in a row. I assume that um, x to the 5th times no. Um, the, the, the numbers that are there get multiplied, then the x's that are there have the exponents added. And then the y, since there's nothing like it, just stays the same as it is. So let's try this next one. I have 4 times negative 2, that gives me negative 8. And then I have a to the third and a, there's nothing there that's an invisible one. So it gives me a to the fourth, because three plus one more gives me four. And then I have b squared and b squared. So two plus two is four. And then I have c to the fifth, c squared, so 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay. 2 thirds times 15. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, so that gives me 10 x to the third and x to the ninth. That's 3 plus 9, so that's x to the twelfth. And then that y squared was just by itself, so it stays y squared. So how can you get fractions with um, it? With a fraction, I'll come back to that page. Hold on a sec. Times a whole number. Okay, you can, three ways to look at it. And in this case, they're all going to divide evenly, and then I'll give you an example where they don't divide evenly. Okay. All right. If they divide evenly, 3 and 15, 3 goes into 15 5 times, and then 2 times 5 is 10. If that, you can take it back to, 
original fraction of multiplication where you put the 1 under the 15 and then you can multiply across and then 30 divides by 3 so you get 10 or you can do the multiplication first and you get 2 times 15 and you get 30 and then you carry the denominator over and you'll still get 10. So there's a couple different ways to look at this. Now when you have a situation where it won't divide evenly, 3 doesn't go into 10, I can either do the straight multiplication and carry over my denominator or I can make this 2 thirds times 10 over 1 which will still give me the same answer, 20 thirds. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to look at it, and you can just pick the one that works the best for you. When you raise a power to a power, okay, so you're going to raise the coefficient to the power, And then you're going to multiply the exponents inside by the power outside. Okay, so what we're going to do is, so this is 3x to the 4 squared. What that actually means is 3x to the 4th times 3x to the 4th. But if you have something like the 12th, here on example C, where we have a power of the 12th, we don't want to write x to the 5th, y to the 7th, z to the 11th out 12 times and then do all that work, right? So there's a shortcut. I'm going to distribute this squared to both of those numbers. So this is 3 squared and x to the fourth squared. 3 squared is 9 and to raise this power I multiply these two exponents and so I get 9x to the eighth. Okay. If I do 4x to the fifth y to the third and I raise that to the third I'm going to raise each of these 4 to the 3rd is 4 times 4 times 4. So that's 4 times 4, which is 16, times 4, which is 64. 5 times 3 is 15. 3 times 3 is 9. Here I'm going to raise all of these to the power of 12. So I'm going to do 5 times 12, which is 60. 7 times 12, which is 84. And 11 times 12, which is 132. When you have a fraction raised to a power, yeah. Four times four times four. So four to the third. Okay, so not going to no, so this is 16 times 4, so that's 64. So the, the only thing, the 3 times 5, you multiply the two exponents together, but when you have the actual number, you're raising it to a power, so that tells you how many times you multiply that same number. So, so you multiply 4 times, yeah. So 4 to the 3rd is 4 times 4 times 4, okay. but then x to the 5th to the 3rd, you multiply 3 times 5 because it's already got that exponent there. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank when I raise a power or fraction to a power, um, I'm going to do 1 5th to the 3rd. Okay. That is 1 5th times 1 5th times 1 5th. So 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So that becomes 1 over 125. And 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. And then I have the 2 and the y. 3 times 2 is 6. And since there's nothing here, it's an invisible 1. 
So y to the third. Okay. Here, if I have a compound, it's going to all three things, the 2, the x squared, and the 3. So what I end up with is 2 to the 4th, x to the 8th, over 3 to the 4th. But I need to know what the 2 to the 4th and the 3 to the 4th are. So 2 to the 4th is 4 twos. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And then I have four threes, so 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. Okay. Now, if you have a hard time with the exponents or the numbers are too large for you to do that, um, if you have a scientific... Yeah, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Order of operations tells us which comes first, exponents or multiplication exponents. So we want to raise to a power first. Then multiply. Okay, so here I have a power of 2. I mean, so I have a power of 2 and a power of 3. So I need to do those first. So I'm going to take this 2 and distribute it in. 4 squared is 4 times 4, so that's 16. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 to the third. Bring that in, that third in. 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. X time to the third because we don't have an exponent there, so it's just x to the third, and then 10 times 3 is 30. Questions so far on just that part. All right, now that I've done the power, then I multiply. So I'm going to do 16 times 27, which... Um, you guys have memorized, right? 16 times 27? 432. Then my exponents, this time, because I'm not raising to a power, I'm multiplying, they get added. So x to the 13th. And then y to the 36th. So raised to a power first is to multiply the exponents. And then multiplying the results is to add the exponents. Okay. If we look at example B, I have x squared squared to the third. So I'm going to take that part out. And let's just look at that for just a second. We start inside and move out. So my first step is x squared squared. So it gives me x to the fourth to the third. And then x to the fourth to the third gives me x to the twelfth. So x squared squared to the third is 2 times 2 times 3. So 4 times 3, 12. Questions on that part so far? Okay, so that's this first part. And then I still have this extra part here to multiply it by. Okay, the 2 has nothing to multiply with, so it just stays a 2. x squared, or sorry, x to the 12th times x to the 4th, they get added. So 12 plus 4 is 16, and then the y squared just stays y squared.
Okay. Um, on this one, there's two ways we can do this. I can divide this 5 by that 5 and then multiply. Oh, sorry, no, I can't. Exponents first. I lied. Okay. I have to square everything. So 3 squared is 9. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 squared is 25. Then I have to bring everything to the third. Okay, 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. 6 times 3 is 18, and 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, now I can do the division. So I can either multiply 9 and 125 and then divide by 25, or since 25 will go into 125, I can do this part first. I like to do that, but it's a matter of preference. 9 times 5 is 45. Ten plus eighteen is twenty eight. Six plus twelve is eighteen. If when you divide you add exponents, <clears throat> what do you think you'll do when you sorry, when you multiply you add exponents, so when you divide you're going to subtract the exponents. So step one is going to be to simplify or divide the coefficients. And step two is going to be to subtract the exponents. Okay. <clears throat> In this case, I have sixes that match. So I'm going to subtract the exponents. 5 minus 4 is 1, <laughs> so that's just 6. 4 minus 2 is 2. 12 minus 8 is 4. And then if I did 9 to the 4th, Six thousand five hundred sixty-one. Okay, three minus three. Zero. Two minus four. They can't be negative. That's what I was just gonna say. First of all, we don't zero exponent. Anything to the power of zero. So r to the 0 equals 1. 10,000 or 100,000 to the 0 equals 1. If you have a power of 0, it equals 1. So here's why. r to the 3rd divided by r to the 3rd, they're the same, right? And anything divided by itself equals 1. So that goes away. Okay. Then the next thing we have is that negative exponents are illegal. Except in scientific notation. But that's somewhere else. That's in general math, negative exponents are illegal. And so what happens is we throw them in the basement. In other words, we put them in jail. So t to the negative 2 gets thrown downstairs. And if there's nothing up top, we add a 1. Okay. So, oops. So this r to the 0, t to the negative 2, is actually 1 over t squared. 
Now, if you don't want to think about negative exponents, there's another way we can look at this. I have m and m to the third. 3 is bigger than 1, correct? So who would win a tug of war, a 3 or a 1? A 3. So you still subtract, but you put it on the side of whoever would have won the tug of war. So the 3 is bigger, so the 2 stays in the bottom. Um, here I have 9 divided by 3. 7 minus 6 is just 1. Okay, 12 over 36. Well, 12 doesn't divide by 36, but they both divide by 12. So I get a 1 and a 3. 5 minus 1 is 4. So I can rewrite that as n to the fourth over 3. 4 over 4, there's nothing left, 0, so they go away. And then 2, sorry, 3 over 1 leaves me 2 and it's upstairs. So it stays upstairs. Yeah. 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. I can't tell if that's an 8 or a 3. Let's just say it's an 8. Okay, 7 and 8. 8 is bigger. So it'll win the tug of war and the one that's left will be on the bottom. And then 2 and 2 goes away. So we're going to put a 1 up top. These will cancel each other. Okay, negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. 5 over 4, so 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 over 5, 5 minus 2 is 3, but because the 5 is bigger and it's downstairs, the 3 stays downstairs. Thirty-two divided by negative eight is negative four. Three minus one is two. Two minus one is one. Five minus two is three. Division and raising to a power and all kinds of stuff going on. So when this happens, I take this two and I put it everywhere. So this is four squared p to the 14th, because I'm multiplying that power, 2 times, or 7 squared is 49, r to the 4th. And then I look, does anything reduce or divide? 16 and 49 don't have anything in common. p and r aren't the same, so we're done. Okay. If I have a negative exponent, I throw it in the basement making positive. So 4 to the 4th is 4 times 4, which is 16 times 4, which is 32 times, or sorry, 64 times 4, which is 256. Um, if it's small enough for you to do it, I want you to go ahead and simplify it. But if it's like, if it was like 4 to the 15th, no. But if it's like 4 or less, you know, 4, 3, or 2, go ahead and do it. Um, do what? I'm sorry? 3 is cubed, yeah. So I have negative 2, so I throw them in the basement, and that becomes 1 64th. Now, when a fraction has a negative exponent, here's what happens. Again, remember how I said I had to give the exponent to everybody? So it comes to both of these guys. And 5 to the negative 2 over 3 to the negative 2, well, I'm not allowed to have a negative, so he gets thrown down there. But if I already have a negative down here, he gets thrown up here. So a negative fraction exponent flips the fraction over. So it becomes 3 squared over 5 squared.
Does that make sense? So if you have a negative exponent, you throw it to the other side of the fraction. Yeah, so negative, or sorry, 9 elevenths to the negative 1 is going to be 11 ninths. If I had, say, 9 elevenths to the negative 3, it would be 11 thirds over 9 thirds. So it flips. Yeah. It would still be the, the fraction? Hmm, that's a good question. Okay, if I have a positive number raised to any exponent, my answer is positive. Okay, but if I have a negative number inside and I raise it to an exponent, it depends. If it is an even exponent, my answer stays positive. And here's why, because negative times a negative is a positive, right? So even exponents give you pairs. Yeah. If I have a negative number and I raise it to an odd exponent, my answer is going to be negative. Because I'll have pairs and one left over. That makes it negative. So if I were to have that negative 9 eleventh, and let's say I rose, raised that to the third, it's going to be still negative because it's an odd power. Um, let me just go back one second and then I'll let you guys go. Um, here, k to the 0, k to the 4th, k to the 6th. Well, they're added, right? 4 plus 0 is 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. Okay. And here I have f to the 7, negative 7, f to the 4th. So the negative 7 has to go downstairs because I'm not allowed to have a 7 upstairs that's negative. And then I'll add the positive numbers to get 11. Okay. And we're going to stop here. I have, we'll go over more of this again tomorrow, but I do want you to like work on some of these. So for your homework, You've got page 90, evens, and then page 92, try the odds, and then we'll go back over everything tomorrow and make sure that we're cleared up before we move on to the next thing. Yeah. So I didn't finish the, the odds when we were working. Go ahead and finish those two. Both two? Yeah.